education system seems almost deliberately designed to make the transition into work as lonely, painful, and disappointing as possible. You get clear metrics of success and a natural sense of progression surrounded by adults paid to praise you. You dutifully work your way to graduation, and then... Experts have coined it the quarter-life crisis, young people emerging from college with no clue. Wait for it. The thought that maybe I would spend 40 to 50 hours a week of my life doing something I don't passionately believe in, it's not an option for me. Ugh. Getting repeatedly roundhouse kicked in the face by reality did impart a couple lessons. A list I like to think of as the quarter-life user manual. Number one, realize that the universe does not care. The universe has not been eagerly awaiting your arrival. It didn't notice. Most people live lives of repetitive toil. You're lucky to even have a chance at something more. Number two, think like an entrepreneur. You have to get outside your own head. You need to be thinking like business people about what the market needs from the business that is you. I happen to be on reasonably good terms with someone who perfectly embodies that entrepreneurial approach. When the industry itself is asking them, what are you getting a massage for? People are saying they're doing it when they're in pain. But the whole industry is focused on pampering. So I thought, what if I just pull this one thing out, make it very clean, easy to consume? That would probably be enough. And I was right. How does my enduring love play into that <laughs> ascendance of the company? <laughs> The process of getting a job and being valued in the marketplace is very painful. You have to push yourself to see your environment in a different way. Think of a skill just as your ability to solve someone else's problem. You need to acquire and then hone skills. And you ought to be wary of some all too prevalent advice about how to do that. I went to a small liberal arts college, had always done really well in school, had a lot of ambition, and then got dumped out into the workforce. The only thing I could get were these entry-level jobs that didn't actually require a college degree. All the jobs I could get were terrible. I actually ended up calling one of my mentors in college and said, what was the point of this four years I just invested? And his solution was, you're probably just going to have to go to grad school. Number three, don't seek salvation in credentials. One thing that I see as a college professor, where I think young people need to be more careful, going into a field out of fear and a desire for prestige, they're going to law school because, well, that's what everyone else is doing. Most of the interesting jobs are not on any of those conveyor belts. You just don't know what they are. Just find something you can be exceptional at. In life, you don't have to be good at everything, but you need to be really good at something, to have something that you do really well that can generate value for someone else. Yeah. And getting really good requires that you protect your focus. If your brain has built up this Pavlovian connection that says at the slightest hint of boredom, there's something to click or scroll and I feel better, break your brain's addiction to stimuli. Protect time for the stuff that's gonna move the needle, the, the building things that's valuable, the learning new skills. Clogging up your brain with cheap digital distractions while deeply delicious is also professionally dangerous. Robots are set to eat up half the existing jobs in this country over the next two decades. These disruptions will bring awesome new opportunities for the focused and economic ruin for the perpetually distracted. They're going to get replaced. You spend most of your day communicating, bouncing messages back and forth from a technological standpoint. What you are doing is a very easily replicatable behavior. Focus enables you to extract maximum creativity from your brain, and it allows you to ground your life in the self-contained satisfactions of mastery. We are five star. You know what I mean, five star? We are shoeologists. We are straight up the best there is. The best there was and the best there will ever be. This is no bragging, it's facts. Children parents for me is, I mean, it's, I comfort her. Sometimes you make good money, sometimes you don't make good money. But I'm very happy every day. The life is like that, happy every day. No matter what. See. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. I just can't you me too? I know, that's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs>
But what about the big P? What about passion? The dominant mode, a lot of young people today think about career satisfaction. It's this idea that there's some inborn natural passion. And therefore, the key to being happy in your job is to find work that matches. It's a matching problem. It assumes that most people have pre-existing passions. We don't have evidence that's true. Follow your passion is bad advice. It's advice you literally cannot follow. You don't have passion. You discover it by going out and colliding with the world. And it's often not where you thought it would be. Passion is emergent. So when I got out of college, I mean, I wanted to be a wonk. I wanted to be a think tanker. I, I sort of wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be telling people what to think about stuff. Now it's Justin Logan uh, with a rather contrarian view. Essentially, the think tanker's job is to put stuff on shelves, right? And what happens to it after it's on the shelf, you have no control over. And then if you take that to heart, then you ask yourself, What's the point? I worked in restaurants when I was in high school. I worked in restaurants through college. There's some like ability to measure we did something. And then before I knew it, I had a business plan and a bank and a location. And then the question becomes yes or no. And for us, it was yes. Yeah. When a restaurant is working well, it's like just a beautiful, harmonious machine. And that is like, yeah, exhilarating. Plenty of people stuck in boring jobs harbor escapist fantasies of transforming their careers like Joe or Justin did. Those fantasies tend to leave out some essential details. You basically have to be a sociopath to want to work in a restaurant. First two years are just utter terror and mistakes constantly. You're up really, really late nights in uncomfortable physical working conditions. Pushing against all of the entropy of the universe. People underrate how hard elite work is. Great careers always are harder than they appear on the outside. If you want an exceptional career, apply exceptional effort. There are no hacks. I know exactly what it feels like to be overwhelmed by this grand project of finding your passion. The trick is start small. You should be thinking in the hypothesis validation phase. Here is a concrete project that pushes me towards this thing I'm vaguely interested in doing. I started small with a short documentary about North Korea. I had no clue what I was doing and I had no idea what it would lead to. You won't either. Getting your dreams out of your head and into the world will require that you befriend failure. It's the perfectly natural outcome of the painful process of closing the gap between your ambitions and your abilities. Oh, and one final thing. I can teach you how to make drinks. I can teach you about wine. Um, our executive chef can teach you how to cook but we can't teach you how not to be an asshole. Showing up on time, meeting deadlines, being kind to coworkers. These unsexy basics are the building blocks of success in any industry. Seriously, don't be an asshole. Let me read you a little quote from George Bernard Shaw. If you want, you want high-minded stuff. This is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy.